How's it going guys? So about a month ago, I purchased with my own money, not sponsored, an AmpBot Genie 600 Robo Mower. And this review is gonna give owners uh, an idea of what they can expect realistically if they decide to purchase this equipment. Now, for this review, I'm gonna keep it simple. I feel like if you're looking to purchase this, you've already done a ton of research, whether it's on Amazon or on their site, to know exactly the specifications that the unit can do. I decided to go with the 600 instead of the uh, 1000 version, although the battery life is a little bit shorter. On the 600, I felt like since it can pretty much mow all hours of the day, it didn't really matter to me whether it needed to go back and charge every hour or so. But if that's something that's uh, important to you, then you may want to go to the 1000 model. The 600 averages what I've seen from my usage over the last month or two, maybe about an hour and a half, depending on if it's going up a steep hill, um, to an hour and a half to about an hour of runtime before it needs to go back uh, and charge. But it's able to cover a lot of ground in that time. So we'll take a look at everything and then you can make your decision on whether you think this is something that'll be good for your home. So here's my AmpBot already charged out of the box and set up. As you can see, it's not really that large of a unit, but it does need to be on a flat surface as mine's is. Setting the AmpBot up took about maybe 15 minutes once I got it outside of the box to find a nice flat surface that I liked that was accessible by a power cord so I could plug it in. Once I got that done, setting up the RTK station was relatively easy. Um, you do need to make sure it has a good line of sight uh, to the sky. It comes with a spike, so here I'm pretty much just uh, stepping it into the ground to make sure it's not moving. And then you need to connect the power, which is going to come from the charging pad for the actual robot, into the RTK to give it power. Once you have that done, you're now ready to power on the entire unit. Once you first do that, and then you get into the app to actually set set it up and connect to your Wi-Fi, it'll take maybe two to three minutes before it's a solid green if it has enough signal to say that it's pretty much ready to go at that time. Then once you've got it ready to go, mine's didn't come fully charged, so the first thing I did was uh, make sure that it could find the base station, which it did, actually with no problems. Typically, it doesn't have any problems finding it whatsoever, um, and it'll begin charging by itself. It'll give you audio messages as well as those in the app stating that it's going back to charge or it's starting to charge. Once you get done with the full charge, you need to map out your property. This is kind of the fun part if you're into video games and stuff. So uh, pretty much the best way that you can do this is just to map it out along the edge of the grass. It's kind of hard to control sometimes, so it, it may take a, a bit to get used to, but eventually you'll you'll get it, it's, it's really not that hard. Now, as you can see here, I have a little strip of grass, grass that's right on the other side of this concrete. You might ask why I wouldn't just make it one huge zone uh, to make it easier, but I'll tell you, that's not a good idea. I've definitely learned that from multiple drawings of this map because the AmpBot will not cross over the concrete to cut that section. So what I've done is just make those different zones. So the zone I have that I'm drawing here is different from this strip of zone that, or the strip of land that is uh, on the mailbox. So definitely learn that lesson, don't waste your time. Here's the AnthBot actually in action, as you can see, based on where you did that zone, it will stop pretty much at the edge on its own, turn around and start going back the other way to complete the zone. And I have noticed that mine does do the stripes um, in the grass it's probably not that visible from this angle overhead but it definitely does do that so that's a plus it goes in straight lines it's not an erratic um, erratic pattern or anything like that in the app this is what it's going to look like when you're doing it um, so you can kind of track it if you just want to see how's it doing and it'll pretty much show you the path that it's already covered now this is a good example of what it maybe can't do. I decided just to let it go to work when I first um, took it out the box and did not mow my lawn because I wanted to see its true capabilities. And in this patch right here, you can see it thinks it's maybe an object, so it's going around it. So one, great that it won't run into things, but two, if your grass height's too high, 
it may not cut it so you'll have to do that manually and this is what it'll look like basically inside the app once it's actually done with the entire zone and then it will take itself back to its base station to resume charging or await your next task or your next zone looking at some of the app features um, this is your home screen this will give you pretty much your full map of your entire property This lists all the zones that you have set. As you can see, I have six zones. Something that they have in here that I right now feel is useless um, is the spot. Basically, I thought what this would do is take it right to a spot and mow that area, but it doesn't. It literally takes the mower to that spot and then it goes into standby mode. So it doesn't do uh, what, I, what I thought it would. Something they did add in a recent update was the edging feature, which does work very well. So it'll get right to the edge of where your, your map boundary is drawn and it will actually uh, cut those edges. So it, it did a great job of that. I just started using it uh, after the update about a week ago. No issues with it whatsoever. The scheduling feature is pretty cool. It does work. Um, I use it a lot now so that I don't have to manually go in and select zones. The do not disturb I have on so it's not out there in the middle of the night uh, mowing the lawn. Uh, again, it's not really um, annoying or loud, but it does have a bright flashlight or a light on it. So either you or your neighbors could get distracted by it. The rain sensor is pretty cool. Uh, mine's is on, so it, if it detects rain, it will return back to the base station. That absolutely does work. It has the ability to go into multiple languages so that you can decide whether you want English, French, German, or whatever. I've had a couple different firmware updates for it and they actually work very well. Um, I did correspond with the uh, help center and told them about some problems I was having and they told me that an update was coming and it came and it fixed all those problems. You have the ability to take a look at the mowing records so that you can see uh, in the past what you've done maybe if you forgot what zone that you actually mowed you can go in there and look and see when the last time a zone was so that's pretty helpful to me i guess you can base that and determine how long it takes to cut the zone um, and then again this is what it'll look like showing you that a zone is complete the little uh, areas not highlighted are where i have trees in my yard and obviously it's just going to go around those so those are most of the features that um you'll use on a daily basis uh, with the robo mower. Some of the things that I've learned from actually having it that I think will be important for anyone that's looking to purchase this thing is the, the, the biggest one is when you're selecting your zones, if you do an overlap of the zones, um, it will mow that area twice. So you really wanna try to get your zones where they don't overlap. The problem with the zone item it's just it just does squares so if your property isn't full nice shapes like mine's it's hard to get the entire zone um, to fit around the property so you may have to make multiple zones to cover one piece of area of the property um, which means it will um, mow that area twice so just be aware of that one problem that your amp bot can have and something that everyone needs to be aware is let's say you have a fence my yard is fenced, so it has to go through um, an open gate that I leave open when I know it's going to be operating in the front yard. Sometimes, um, depending on how you draw your route for it to get out of that gate, it could actually get stuck and can't get back in the gate. I think this has happened maybe two or three out of the like 30 times or so that I've used it, um, but it is something to be aware. Mine's um, did that and it goes into standby basically because it's usually coming back to the base station because it's either finished the job or the battery is dying so it's going back to charge so when it did this um it pretty much went into standby and you'll have to just pretty much go get it and carry it back to the docking station to redock it again it hasn't happened that often but if you have gates it's something you should be aware of so in conclusion again i think it's an amazing product um, if you do decide to purchase it, I hope you enjoy yours just as much as I'm enjoying mine. If you like this video, make sure you uh, like or drop a comment on anything that you've noticed about your AnthBot if you already have one or any concerns that you're um, worried about.
prior to purchasing it. And I'll definitely be sure to see if I can answer or find out based on my experience with the model. Good luck.